What is up guys? This video is the first part in our series on PyTrees, where we build behavior trees using a library called PyTrees in Python. Now, this is actually quite important for robotic software projects as well, because when it comes to Python in robotics, it's very common to use behavior trees instead of FSMs. If you don't know what a behavior tree is conceptually, or you don't know what its components are, then I have a full series on behavior trees in C++, where the first part is only about the concepts. And this is the video. If you want to look at behavior trees in C++, I have an entire series which starts with this video and then you have two more videos where you build a behavior tree from scratch in both these videos. In this video, you will understand how to use PyTrees in Python to create a basic action node, condition node, use sequence nodes, and then store information inside your behavior tree for using it later. And the last thing is using decorators. And this is all about this video. Now, I'm assuming that you've already seen part one of my behavior trees in C++ series, where we understood the basic idea of a behavior tree, why it is important, and how they're different from finite state machines. We also looked at different components of a behavior tree. If you haven't seen that video and you do not have an understanding of all of these things, please look at that video. Now, based on that video, in behavior trees, you have something called execution node and control flow node. When it comes to PyTrees, there are certain terminology differences. One, execution nodes are actually called behaviors here. Second, when it comes to your control flow nodes, a sequence node is still called a sequence node here. A fallback node in PyTrees is called a selector node. A parallel node is called a parallel node and a decorator is still called a decorator. Now, with regards to only this video, which is part one of this PyTree series, we only need to understand these terminology differences. But otherwise, the conceptual idea is exactly the same as I discussed in that video. In this video, we will code one simple example of a behavior tree, which is this. This is the same behavior tree we coded in C++ in my previous behavior trees in C++ series. This behavior tree represents a dummy example of a robot arm. The flow of this problem statement is the following. You're supposed to first check the battery of your robot arm. If that's enough, you open its gripper, you move the arm to the right position to reach the object, and then you close the gripper, thus grabbing the object. We stop here because this is a dummy example. And this is how it is implemented in a behavior tree. You have the root node, which is your sequence node, and then you have four children node. I hope at this point you understand the different components of this behavior tree. Now, the root node is the sequence node, which necessitates all children to either return success or running. If any one of them is a failure, then the root node will say that it has failed. In this case, the first child node is a condition node, which is check battery, where the battery is checked. The other three nodes are action nodes, open gripper, approach object, and close gripper. Now, this is our simple behavior tree. I like using examples to implement and understand different ideas in software engineering. So let's actually have this example to implement this behavior tree using PyTrees in Python. We will have three different sections in this coding video, where in the first part, you have this behavior tree as it is, where each child node immediately returns success after a delay of one second. So no child node needs to be ticked twice or thrice for it to return success. And also each child node necessarily, as I said, returns success. In the second example, we will change something so that some of the nodes are actually not supposed to send success. They will send running. And if you tick them n number of times where n is something you decide, then only they will return success. And in the third example, you will use decorators, specifically an inverter. But let's just slow down and look at the first example itself. So as I said, in the first example, once the root node ticks your child, the child after a delay of one second will just return success. So let's see how this code is set up. The first line is just about importing sleep from time because we want to have a delay of one second later on. All the imports you see here are from PyTrees. The first one, PyTrees.Behavior, is used for importing behavior, which as I said before, is an execution node. We will have two different kinds of execution nodes based on this behavior class. We will inherit from the behavior class and have action and condition nodes. The next import is for status because you will return the status as success or failure or running. The import after that is sequence because you will use a composite node, which is your sequence node. You can import sequence, selector and so on and so forth from composites. But right now we only use sequence. So that is the only thing we import. And the last one is logging because we will log anything we want to see on the terminal using a logger from PyTrees itself. So these are all the imports. Now, the next thing we want to do is implement the primitives. You have a sequence node as a primitive here, but we already import sequence from PyTrees.Composites, but we also have action nodes and condition nodes as children. 
So first, let's use behavior and implement an action node. In PyTrees, you can use behavior as your base class to actually implement action and condition. And that is what we've done here. Let's look at the class action. In action, you have your constructor, of course, where you actually call the constructor of your base class. This is standard Python, so I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The next four methods, setup, initialize, update, and terminate, are actually methods inherited from the class behavior, and we need to override them. And that is what we're doing so that we add functionalities. Let's look at each of them. Setup is like a delayed one-time constructor where instead of having whatever values you needed to initialize in your constructor, you have them in your setup. This is used in cases where, let's say you want the object of the class action to be created, but you don't want to initialize certain things because that would lead to some error in your code. So you will only add that initialization in setup and you have to call this setup manually. Now there is a case where setup is actually called without you calling explicitly, but let's not go into that. For this example, you actually need to call setup. The method initialize is actually used every time a behavior tree is ticked for the first time or ticked all over again once its execution was complete. So if it returned a success or a failure, and then you tick the behavior tree again, initialize is called. If you want to set or reset the values of any variables, when the behavior tree is ticked for the first time or the behavior tree execution was complete and during the next tick, it has to be initialized, you actually do this. Update is actually called every time you tick the behavior tree and hence this node itself. So this is like the core functionality of your node, which will be a part of the behavior tree. Terminate is called when the corresponding action node has done its job. So it has returned a failure or a success, or if there's any higher priority call, which makes this node invalid, but let's not go into that. For our case, if the node returns success or a failure, so its job is done, terminate is called. So this was your class action. The class condition in our case is exactly the same because our implementation is quite simple. We just need one condition node and three action nodes, all of them returning success after one second. So look at this code, but it is very similar. Now, as I said in this example, each child node will return success after a delay of one second. That's why in the update method, you see sleep for one second, followed by success for both action and condition. And there will be three instances of action, namely open gripper, approach object, and close gripper, and one instance of condition, which will be check battery. All of them returning success after a sleep of one second, whenever they're ticked. Now you've created two classes for action and condition. That's all you need. The sequence primitive is already imported from composites. Now let's make a function that creates your behavior tree. This function is called makeBT. And here you first create a root. The root in this example is a sequence node. Now, since we've imported sequence as a composite, all you need to do is create an instance of that node, which is sequence with the name sequence. As I said before, check battery is a condition node with the name check battery. That is the name of the node. Open gripper is an action node with the name open gripper. It's the same with approach object and the same with close gripper. All of them have the same functionality in their update method, but in the real example, of course, each will have different functionality. So you have to code it accordingly, but this is a dummy example where we are setting the base to understand how to use PyTrees. Now, once you have created all these nodes, you need to add them as children for the root. Check battery, open gripper, approach object, and close gripper from left to right. And this order is very important. Once you've done that, you just have to return the root, which returns the behavior tree. This is simple. This is where main execution happens. The first line is for you to set the logging level, which is debug. I've set it to debug because if you see our logging code, which is a part of every method in both your action and condition class, you are actually using the level debug. This is what I'm talking about. This is self.logger.debug. Logger is actually inherited, so you don't have to worry about it. You have self.logger.debug. So that is a debug level, and that's why we had to do this on line 67. The next line is just to make your behavior tree using the function we just created and return it. After that, we tick the tree, and I'm sure by now you know the concept of ticking already. We need to tick the tree only once because in this example, which is one of three, each child node returns a success. So once you tick the behavior tree, the ticking goes from left to right, and then the sequence will return success because we are returning success from every child node. That's why we only need to tick once. But if that were not the case, like the example we will see in a couple of minutes, you will have to tick the tree a couple of times. And that is where tick once without any loop won't work. But here we just tick the tree once. That's all there is for this example. If everything goes right, what we will see is that each child node returns success after ticking, and then the sequence, which is the root node, also returns success. Let's run this using Python and see what happens on the terminal. So we've run this code, 
Spend some time looking at your terminal to understand what's happening, but I'll give you a gist already. First, the sequence node, which is the root node, is ticked, and then it goes to check battery, which is the leftmost node, which is a condition node. Condition node is ticked. Since it is ticked for the first time, you will see initialize, and then update, because that is where your core functionality stands. Then stop, because the status goes from invalid to success. So the node has done its job, it has returned a success, and then the node terminates, because it returns success, and as I said before, terminate is called whenever the node returns success or failure. After check battery, open gripper is called, which is the one next to check battery. And then the same process is repeated again. You see success after a delay of one second. The same thing happens for approach object and close gripper. Once close gripper also returns success, it means that the sequence node can return success back. So that is why the sequence node also stops and it returns success. That is where your behavior tree execution ends only with one tick. So this was a simpler example where with a single tick, you tick all the child nodes and then you are done because every child node returns success. Now, this was the first example. But for our next example, we will build up on this example and change certain things. We will now have child nodes where you need to tick them multiple times and not just once. And we, while creating the node or the behavior tree, decide how many ticks each child needs. In this example, let's say check battery needs only one tick. So it will be the same as what we see right now. Open gripper needs two ticks. Approach object needs five ticks and close gripper needs three ticks. Let's think about this example for a second before we look at the solution code. If you want to implement this, your update method should not return success after a delay of one second immediately, right? It first needs to check how many ticks it has already seen. And once it has seen enough number of ticks, it will return success. That means we need to store this information. We will store this information inside the class itself as a member variable. And every time a tick is given to whatever node you want, let's say open gripper, which needs two ticks, it will decrement the count. And then the next time it is ticked again, it'll do that again and check against the value you actually need. Let's look at the solution here. So here, everything is the same except us storing these ticks as member variables. In the initialization code, you see I've stored two variables, max attempt count and attempt count. And then we will decrement this value and as soon as this value goes to zero, we will return success. Otherwise we return running in our update code. But you could say that we only need one variable and we can decrement it. Why do we have two variables? Well, you'll see that in a second. If you look at your method update, this is slightly different where you are actually reducing your attempt count by one and then sleeping for one second like usual. But after decrementing, if your attempt count is equal to zero, then you return success. That means the number of ticks is equal to the number of required ticks for that specific action node. Here you will return success if that is the case. But if that is not the case, you return running. Now, as I said before, we need to use two variables and not one. Why is that? Let's say your behavior tree is ticked a hundred times and open gripper has already returned success. The node will terminate, but if it is still ticked again, you still need to reset your attempt count to the max value. Otherwise, you will lose this information. That's why in your initialize method, you have attempt count equal to self dot max attempt count. So every time this node is ticked all over again, once it has already returned success, you will reset this value. And that is why I also said that initialize method is different from setup or your constructor because initialize is called every time your node is ticked for the first time or it is ticked after it has returned success or failure. So it terminated and then you actually tick this node again. You see initialize being called. Looking at your condition node, it is exactly the same as the previous example because in this slightly modified example, check battery still returns success only after one tick. So we don't need to change anything for condition. Now you see that when you're making your behavior tree, your check battery instance is exactly the same, but all your action nodes are actually now using two arguments. That is because in our constructor, we have two arguments to save the max number of counts needed. If you go back to the class, that is what you will see. You see your max attempt count because we need to store this information inside the instance of your action class. So as I said before, you have two, three, and five. So open gripper needs to be ticked twice, approach gripper needs to be ticked five times, and close gripper needs to be ticked thrice. That is all we do. Now you just add children to your root node and return your root node like before. This is your main execution node like before. What changed here is that instead of ticking the tree once, we tick it 20 times. You can set any number. I set it 20 just as an example, where every time you have a new tick, I actually print new tick here. You tick the tree and 
if the child returns running, then the sequence also returns running. So you have to tick it all over again. This is a concept we've already discussed in the previous series on behavior trees. So please check that out if you don't understand what I'm saying. Now let's run this behavior tree to see what is actually happening. We've executed this piece of code. Now let's see what's actually happening on the terminal. We have 20 ticks in this example. I'll give you a gist of what's happening right now, but please spend some time looking at your terminal to understand what is exactly happening. The first thing that happens is that your sequence is ticked. After that, the first child is ticked, which is check battery. Check battery returns success immediately and terminates like before. Then open gripper is ticked in the same root tick, but open gripper does not return success now. It returns running. And that is why the tick is stopped at this point and your root returns running. Now in the loop, you tick the tree once more, right? And this time, this tick goes to your sequence and then goes to open gripper, which was ticked already once. Because we've set the number of ticks for open gripper to two, this time your open gripper node returns success. And that is what you see here, it also terminates. Then immediately in the same tick, approach object is ticked and approach object needs five ticks. So you will see five more ticks after this before approach object returns success. Once approach object is ticked five times, it also returns success. And then we move on to close gripper. Close gripper needs three ticks. So the same thing happens. We wait for three ticks. And once that happens, every child for the root has returned success. So you see that the sequence stops and it also returns success. You then see a new tick after that because we have 20 ticks in all, which is a lot more than what you need to tick this behavior tree completely and get success from it. So that's why you see check battery, open gripper, approach object and close gripper again and again. You also see that here all statuses move to invalid and then the tick starts from scratch where you first see check battery which returns success immediately and then for open gripper you need to have two ticks which is exactly what we've seen before. So this goes on and on and on because we have 20 ticks. So this was your second example where all the children of your root node needed different number of ticks for them to return success. Otherwise they were returning running. This is also where you see why initialize method is important. Now the third example is about using decorators. So let's go back to our simpler example where each node is returning success immediately. But instead of success, let's say each action node, namely open gripper, approach object and close gripper return failure we will actually change this behavior tree to use an inverter instead of just using action node. So each action node will have an inverter so that when the action node returns failure, the inverter inverts it and you get success in the first go. If we start from example one and make some changes for this example, the only thing that changes is that your action node returns failure instead of success. And that is what you see on line 22 again. We don't make this change for condition node because condition node in this example will still return success. So this is just for action node. And of course, this is a dummy example to drive the message home. So you have action node and condition node where there's only a single line change between example one and example three. But now we will use an inverter to turn this failure to success. And this inverter is our decorator here. To do that, we also need to import the decorator. This is how you import your inverter decorator from PyTrees. While making your behavior tree, you just need one simple change for all your action nodes. Instead of just creating an action node, you create an action node and wrap it around an inverter. So your inverter will actually take your action node as a child. And that is why you see your inverter with two arguments. One, name of the inverter, which is usually the case for any node, you need to give it a name. And then the child node, which is the action node open gripper for the first one, action approach object for the second one and action close gripper for the third one. And that's all there is. After that, all you need to do is add them as children to your root node. In your main execution code, as before, you set the logging level to debug, you create your behavior tree and you tick only once. We are ticking only once like the first example because each node is returning success in the first tick itself. In this case, all action nodes, open gripper, approach object and close gripper return failure, but you have an inverter around them. So that failure will be turned to success. Let's run this code and see what's happening. So in this example, you just needed one tick 
to get success from your root node because each child has given you a success in the first tick itself. This is very similar to the first example, except that you're using an inverter. So if you see here, once the sequence was ticked, your condition node returned success immediately, but your action node returned failure. In this case, open gripper returned failure, but your inverter changed it to success. And that also happens for approach object and also for close gripper. Please look at the terminal further and spend time understanding what's happening here. But overall, these were three simple examples to set the base for understanding how PyTrees are used. We looked at how to create an action class, a condition class, and use them to create our own action nodes, our condition nodes. We used a primitive from composite, which was sequence. We also looked at how to store information and use them in different ticks, and also reset information using initialize method. And lastly, we saw how to use a decorator, namely an inverter in this case. I hope this video was useful to you and you understood how to start using PyTrees for implementing behavior trees in Python. We will do a lot more using another example in the next video where you would even share information between different nodes. So we will play around with PyTrees a lot more and I hope that will be useful to you as well. Thank you and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.